Hey, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and welcome to our 12th Fat Quarter of the Month project. So, hey, we started this thing in March of 2021, and look at us. We've had a lot of projects that we've made, but one of the most requested things that we get sometimes is how to make a stitch book. Well, I mean, I've always thought, well, you just kind of stitch your stuff on some stabilizer, go through all of your stitches methodically, and there you have a stitch book. But then kind of started thinking about it, and this has evolved in so many ways, this little project this month. I mean, it started off, it was going to be a recipe book. Then it was going to be anecdotal sayings. Then it was going to be blah, 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 blah. But now I feel like I'd like to show you a cute little project with some of our Valentine fabric that we have from Riley Blake. You're going to love it and you're going to want to order more because there's more than just the five uh, different ones that we picked this month in this collection. So check that out at BerninaofNaperville.com. But we've made a little stitch book and I call it Recipes for Success. And there's some applique that's been done. Look, we even stitched our own notebook paper. So if you look here, ooh, there's another applique. But there is some doodles. And then I've used a Micron Pigma pen. Now, Micron Pigma pens are typically used when you are tracing a hand embroidery design onto fabric. And they come in really, really fine tips so that when you trace it, you can just sew right over it and, and you never see it. But they're also really good for writing on fabric for another reason, and that's because you can write without them bleeding like a Sharpie marker would or whatever. So that's how I marked the pieces here. So that's, I don't really organize them by number or anything like that. I just kind of use this as a little doodle book. So hence the recipes for success. But then here's another one that I used from the quilting section on my Bernina 880 plus. And then sometimes I manipulated the stitches and other times I just kind of let them be. And then another one from the and some multi-directional stitches. And then finally, I even made a little stitch book from my old 830 record. So hopefully you would find something like this very usable. And I used this little ring like this so that you could keep adding to it, you know, when inspiration strikes. I also want to point out that I will be referencing the uh, stitched postcard that we uploaded a couple of weeks ago, and I'll link it in the description of this video, just in case, you know, you want some more applique inspiration. All right, let's get to it. For this month's Fat Quarter of the Month, there are five little Valentine's fabrics, one that we're gonna fussy cut, or I have fussy cut in some applications, a white background fabric, and then these other coordinating prints. So basically, what we're making is a stitch book. And I have a couple pages already complete. So um, think about all of the Fat Quarter Clubs that we've done up until now. This one is our 12th one. We've done some free motion stuff in the past. Remember our journal cover? We've done a little bit of applique, but I'm gonna cover these really cute stitches that look like little crosses and ones that look like this Frankenstein stitch here. And if you want a little bit more instruction on this, don't forget to check out our stitched postcards because that one we play around a lot with our applique stitches. So this is all applique and I'm also gonna show you how we created our own little fabric notebook paper. So that's kind of what we're doing. But once we make all of these things, we want to make it into a stitch book. So this is just a way for you to kind of collect those stitches or try out your stitches on your machine and then see what works for you. You can label them. You can see I've actually done that here and I'm using a Micron Pigma pen to do that. I find that they write very nicely on fabric without bleeding. And then it's just a way for me to, you know, just kind of see what I like and if I like the way they stitch out. So. Let's just start with making our notebook paper. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna need to make our notebook paper is to trim our papers about 
just a hair over six inches by nine inches because they're going to get trimmed down a little bit at the end but the book is about six by nine inches and i've got my notebook paper thread and my little pink stripe thread there and to space them apart, I'm actually using my 97 foot. And the 97 foot on the left side there is the distance of, is gonna be the distance of the stripes. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on the machine and then just start stitching row after row after row until we have something that looks similar to this. So let's go see how that's done. So the 97 foot is on the machine and I've got the straight stitch with the default settings. And I used the side of my foot just there to make my first pass using the side of the foot. Now, if you wanted the top to look more like old fashioned ledger paper or whatever, you could actually have gone about an inch down, but I'm not going for that accuracy. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and cut this and then I'm going to do another row. And so we're just going to line that left side of the foot up right there with the edge. And if you want this to be super straight, you're going to go a little bit slower. cut and just keep going, keep going, keep going until the paper is covered. So I'm taking the white fabric the fat quarter that was in your fat quarter pack. And I've put some SF 101 on the back side of it just to give it some more stability, but there's no stabilizer at this point. It's just the SF 101 that keeps it stiff enough so we can do some nice uh, straight line stitching without too much puckering. And also it will help hide any stray threads that get under that very white material. So now I'm just gonna trim up those little stray hairs when I get that back to my cutting table. But now what I wanna do is line this up right about there, which is at about the 7 8 of an inch line there on my needle plate. And I am gonna stitch, I've changed my thread to pink so that I can do the little margin lines on the notebook paper. And I'm gonna do two stitches really close to each other. And I'm gonna start right here like that and now I'm just gonna stitch. Once again, taking it nice and slow so I can make sure I get something perfectly straight. And you can also see that I didn't fill in the last couple rows there to make it look more like notebook paper. Okay, so now I'm gonna pivot and now I'm gonna do another little stitch by using the inside of my toe, that very, very inside of my toe there and making another stitch right next to it. And you need to go as slowly as you possibly can for this so that we can create that illusion of two tiny pink lines next to each other. So now that we have this, I'm going to trim the threads and then I'm going to put a layer of medium weight tearaway stabilizer behind this so that we can play around with some of our stitches. So I have a little variety of pink and red threads here and a little swatchy poo that I use to just test some of the stitches. So sometimes I just like to go through, you know, some people make a stitch book more methodically where you go through stitches one through whatever on the machine. I just like to play around. I just like go here, do I like it? Go there, do I like it? But let's play around with some of our applique stitches first to see how we like them. So that's what I'm gonna use this notebook paper 
swatch to do. So that means that I'm going to be playing around in my quilting stitches and those are the 1300s and on most of the Berninas they're represented by the little grid, the little like little checkerboard that's on the machine. So I think it might be fun to thread up this magenta so that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to be changing my foot to the 20 D foot and don't forget every time you use a D foot you want to engage that dual feed mechanism right there. So now let's get in close so we can actually see what we're going to stitch. I am going to start off with, let's just look at our number 1332 feather stitch. Okay, I like that one. Machine's looking good. I'm ready to move on to my notebook paper. All right, here we go. 1332, I'm gonna line it up right here. I'm gonna go right in between my little designs here and I'm gonna use that pattern begin function right there on my screen that showed up and I'm just gonna stitch my feather. All right, so now I'm gonna cut, and then, I don't know if you know this or not, but if you have a five series or a 770, you can actually, it's a 570, 590, and 770, you can actually go into the I button and select the triple stitch function. If you have a 790 or an 880 plus, you can actually go into the stitch designer. And I'm gonna select all, in the stitch designer and activate the triple stitch. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna just go on the next line next to this and I'm gonna stitch my feather triple stitch. And how cute is this stitch? It looks like a little baseball stitch or something like that. And then you can clearly see the two differences. You know, like one is a little bit thicker looking than the other. I think that's pretty special looking. So now I can go back to my stitch and let's pick something else. You know, there's a lot of other crazy quilt type of stitches on here. And you know, some of them I know exactly what they look like. Others I'm a little bit more curious about. Like for instance, some of these wonky looking ones that are connected with a line in between. For instance, 1360. So I'm gonna just stitch this one right here like this and see what this looks like. And I also will be numbering these stitches with my Micron Pigma pen so that I won't forget what I did and what they are. Well, that's pretty cute. Like that's a little stitch. It's a little wonky, a little topsy-turvy. I could see using that on something. And now I'm just scrolling ahead to look at some of the other designs because there's some really cute ones. Now, of course, we can't rule out some of our more basic serpentine stitches. So those of you that like to do machine quilting, might really like these stitches. So I'm just gonna stitch out 1398. And this could be another good one that could look pretty cool if we engaged that triple stitch on it. So I'm gonna do that by going, I'm working on an 880 plus. So I'm gonna select the whole stitch and then engage triple stitch. And now I'm gonna line this one up just where I started the last one.
and this is one of those stitches where I sometimes like to stitch it out where I, you know, start like up here just on a line and I do a row, gonna do my pattern begin. And now I'm gonna hit my pattern begin and mirror my stitch so that I can create a little pretty, pretty, pretty stitch here. Here we go. And see how I'm lining it up right at the same line that I did this stitch? And this will help keep it starting right in the same spot. And then look, look at that cool stitch. So if you are into surface embellishment and things like that, that makes a very cool looking stitch, I think. So those were all some stitches that can be found in the quilting section. But let's go look at some more because they're more than just that one. I think I missed a few I could have pointed out to you. I wanna just look at 1382. I'm gonna line this one up right here. What do you think of that one? I think it looks pretty cool. Let's just try a few more. This one is stitch number 1375. And so this is where I get a lot of ideas and inspiration just by stitching things out like this. So what I want to point out to you about this stitch, if you can see, see how it has that little circle right there? You know what? This might be really cool to do. I think this would be cool to feed like a heavy yarn or thread every other stitch through that and just add some detail onto a decorative stitch. So by the time I go do some other projects and everything, I'm going to forget all about the fact that I wanted to do that to this stitch. So now before this goes into my fancy little recipe book or my little recipes for success, I'm going to actually feed some thread through this and put it in my book so then I will remember when I reference this. If you're not very good at remembering to write down the stitch numbers and you have an 880 plus, don't forget that you can actually touch the go back 16 stitches and there is all of the stitch numbers, all the stitches that we've actually stitched out. Pretty cool, huh? And also when you turn off the machine and turn it back on again, it'll remember exactly what you did to the stitch and how you stitched it out. I just think that that is super cool. Now, sometimes when you're doing a stitch, you want it to end perfectly at the end. Well, there's an external button on our 790s and our 880s that will just automatically stop when the stitch has come to an end. And I have mine programmed to cut and lift the presser foot when it's complete. And look at that. So this one was 1374. So then I will write that down. So as you look at my little piece here, what I like to do is make this really look like this was written in a notebook. It's just fun for me. And it's just like, it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to have everything lined up because when you make your stitch books, they're supposed to be playtime. Don't fret over making everything look so perfect. It can just be doodles because doodles are what stimulates our brain to be more creative. I think I have room for one more to stitch out. Oh, another thing is you don't have to stitch out all of these stitches if you don't want to. You can just do the ones that tickle your fancy. And you can also do them so they're not always the maximum nine millimeters apart. So for instance, this one that I'm doing now is five millimeters. So let's see what this one looks like. Oh my, this is one of my favorites. I totally love it. This little cross. Okay. 
and this one is $13.55. And that's gonna be the last one that I put on this page. Now, no book would be complete, no notebook would be complete without proper penmanship. So that's why I went ahead and spelled out quilting using one of the alphabets on the machine. And now I'm gonna go ahead and select all of that and use pattern end so that I'm just gonna write quilting once up here at the top of my paper. And I'm gonna sit it right on the line just like that right where my needle is going to start and I'm going to try to keep this as straight as possible. So now I know what kind of stitches these are. Once you've completed one of these, we're gonna put it aside and then we're going to examine a background fabric. So this is one of the fabrics out of our Fat Quarter collection. And I have taken one of the cute little Valentines that I fussy cut and I made a heart with some fusible web and centered that little kitty's face right in there. So now I'm gonna cut this out and then I'm going to iron it just somewhere on my red heart material. And then what I think is gonna be really fun with some of those quilting stitches that I was just playing with on the machine when I made my notebook paper, I can take now and translate into an applique stitch that I want to do around this heart. And place it right here on this piece and then put some tear away, some medium weight tear away stabilizer behind it. To go around my heart, I've decided on stitch number 1360 which is this one right here. I think it'll add like a nice contrast. I've switched my thread to black, and now I'm gonna go around my heart. So these are just some basic applique things that I like to do is I like to actually start in the dip of the heart. And this stitch has kind of a central line in it that's gonna go right on the very, very edge of the heart, so kind of on the background, but just off of the applique. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start stitching. I, I wanna make sure that I have needle down engaged, and I might actually wanna see if I wanna engage pattern end. Pattern end is gonna stop at the end of the pattern. So it's gonna do like a short line, a long line, and a short line, and then it's gonna stop. But really the most important thing for me to remember is that I'm gonna pivot when my needle lands in the down position. So here we go. See how it's in the middle? Now is where I could pivot if I needed to. See how it's in the middle? Now is where I could pivot if I needed to. Pivot time. See, I don't want to pivot yet until that needle gets down into the middle, just like that. I'm getting down to the tip and I'm just going to sew to the very tip just like that 
Now I'm gonna come back around. And I'm just gonna keep my needle going, when it's in the center, just going off the edge of the applique. So now I've appliqued our cute little kitty, and I think that's cute. And I'm gonna tear away the stabilizer, and now we're gonna sandwich this in with the double-sided fusible Peltex. So once you have your notebook paper and your backside of it, so notebook paper goes onto the double-sided fusible Peltex, and then one of these pieces goes onto the back like this. So once you have that, you have to really line these up like this, because we don't want to press just the notebook paper onto the double-sided Peltex on our board, because we'll probably iron the Peltex onto our board, and we don't want that. So I have just cut my little backing piece this red piece that my little kitty with the heart around it is on. And so I'm just gonna press all of these together at the same time. And sometimes I'm gonna clean my pipes a little bit on my iron. And this double-sided Piltex seems to like some steam. So I'm giving it some steam. And now I'm gonna turn it over. and iron that the rest of the way. And now as it cools, you can see that it's adhered together. So I'm gonna trim my little edges up and I could do this with a rotary cutter or I could do it with my scissors as long as I just keep my scissors straight. Then we're gonna stitch along the edge to hold all of our pieces together and to give our edges a nice clean look. We're just gonna have a simple zigzag stitch with a stitch width of five millimeters and a stitch length of one millimeters. And I'm gonna line this up so when the needle swings to the left, it's gonna go just off the edge of our piece. get up on the edge just like that. I like to think of landing with the needle to the right of what I'm overcasting the edge of and then I just start again. And then I'm just going to over sew on the corner just a little bit before I cut. And finally, I'm going to use the little eyelet that comes on the machine. It's stitch number 61, and I'm lining this up so that there's a little notch behind the number 20 foot. It's that notch right behind the foot like that. So I'm going to put that on, bring my dual feed mechanism down. So that's where I'm lining this foot up in the back, just on that spot. And then I'm lining it up on the 5 eighths of an inch line over here. And now that that's in place and everything is just awesome, I'm going to stitch an eyelet. And I'm using white thread.
And then I'll just use an awl or one of my little cutters to just cut that hole. Now I have variegated thread threaded up in my machine and I'm working in the 400 group of stitches. So I've used pattern limitation nine times to stitch out stitch number 401. And I can do the same thing for the other stitches, but I just like to test and see how fun these stitches are with the variegated thread. I have to admit, these are some of my favorites. I love the satin look. I love playing with the variegated thread. Now you can also hit pattern end and then mirror the stitch, which is also fun to do. There's also some of the stitches that I think are more fun to play with, like you stitch it out the default setting, like this little bobble. But then maybe you try it with a narrower stitch width of something like maybe six, and then you close it together just a little bit, and I'm doing like 9.8. You're also going to notice that the variegated may be a little bit more stripy. Just a kind of fun thing to play around with. And I'm just going down all of the stitches here. And then this 409 looks like it's some sort of little ribbon. Let's have a look. Now, I want to branch out a little bit because I am using a pretty awesome Bernina 880 here with the multi-directional stitching. So what I'm going to do is go to my stitch bank, which is 501, and I just want to stitch out stitch number 506. Now, the important thing about stitching with multi-directional stitches is keeping the lines parallel to the side of the presser foot. And don't let the machine twist or turn the fabric. We're just gonna stitch it as barely touching it. I mean, my hands aren't even on the fabric right now. And you can see how large the stitch is. I can't even fit two repetitions on my notebook paper. Look at that. Look at that cool stitch. I like that. Let's do 501. 501 is fun. I'm just going to start it right like this.
this machine feeds so beautifully that I don't even need to really hold on to anything. It's, it's really amazing. And I want to use a little stitch and I'm going to do stitch number 457. And I'm going to set stitch number 457 to pattern end. And what I want to do is just start stitching the stitch vertically this way. Now, I'm going to pivot exactly 90 degrees and stitch the stitch again. And now another 90 degrees. And now I'm going to pivot again. And I've made a little square and kind of my own design. So there's so many other ways that you can add the stitches into a stitch book other than just straight lines. Well, I hope you learned a lot and gave you some creative inspiration for making a stitch book. And you know, you could use that lined paper as a blank slate for just like little sayings like I originally thought, or a treasured family recipe that you could give to a loved one. You know, there's really lots of ideas for this, but I really just want to make sure that you get some inspiration and you do something different every once in a while. So if you like this tutorial and you want to see more just like it, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville, and there you can like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.